Hi, so I'm Brandon Dunn. I've been working on the Manage IQ team since about 2008 or so. And uh, recently we've been working on the Ansible Tower integration. And uh, Drew's been working with me too. Yeah, um, I've been here about eight months. Uh, I think the first major project that I got on with provisioning was Ansible Tower, so it's been a lot of fun. Um, I don't have much to say other than what I talk about in the demo here. <laughs> All right, so we'll go through a brief introduction of Ansible and Ansible Tower. Um, some use cases that we had to fulfill. The implementation details, a demo, and talk about the future. So what is Ansible? If you search online, you'll find that Ansible is a software platform for configuring and managing computers, which combines software deployment, ad hoc task execution, and configuration management. Um, it's primarily a CLI interface. It uses SSH or WinRM to connect to host systems. Um, it can be one-off or script-based playbook execution and it's used to help automate IT infrastructure and system configurations. Then you can get into Ansible Tower, which is really a web UI and REST API that wraps Ansible. Um, it launches jobs based on job templates. It makes the user interaction much easier, it requires fewer details up front from the user. Um, it has dynamic inventory from multiple inventory sources. So rather than using a static file, it can pull inventory from like a VMware provider or Amazon. Um, they have a user permission system so that admins don't have to give out username and password or SSH keys to individual users. They can just assign a, or delegate a permission to an Ansible Tower user. Um, and that will allow them to perform certain actions on a system. And it can dynamically update your playbook on job template launch. So that way you're running from the latest code all the time. So we already had one configuration manager in Manage IQ, and that was Foreman. Um, our initial integration was for bare metal provisioning. Um, Foreman's about desired state configuration. It relies on scheduled check-ins. It's agent-based, and it's driven from a Puppet agent that's installed on a machine. Ansible Tower is used to configure new and existing systems. It's a little bit easier for the getting started with existing systems. Um, it can be one-off or scheduled jobs based on job templates. And they drive the configuration through the Ansible Tower installation that's on the machine. So, as always, with our use cases, we always start with inventory. And once you have inventory, we wanted to implement Ansible Tower as a service. We also wanted to be able to launch things through custom buttons on VMs. And we also wanted to enhance provisioning state machines. So in order to talk to Ansible Tower, we created an Ansible Tower client gem. Ansible Tower has a very browsable REST API. So that made development very easy. Um, the gem is a simple API wrapper to provide Ruby classes for each object type. The methods are dynamically built based on the object type. And that allows the gem to be very flexible. So when things are changed in the future or um, new enhancements are made to the API, we automatically pick them up. Um, collection paging we in <coughs> implemented with lazy enumerators. That allows for very quick initial loading and users don't have to deal with the hassle of asking for a next page or knowing that there is not one. In Manage IQ, when we added Foreman, um, we tried to make the modeling very genetic, generic. That way it could be reused for other providers. We thought maybe Chef or Ansible would be a future provider. Um, so we called things th like configured systems for hosts. And we came up with configuration profiles and scripts. And then um, we reused some of the orchestration stack modeling for the Ansible Tower jobs. And in the future, we may be able to enhance the form and integration to use some of the newer things that we added for uh, Ansible Tower. 
on our refresh, we pull back the inventories, and we call them inventory groups in our database. Um, configuration scripts map to Ansible Tower job templates, and configured systems map to Ansible Tower hosts. If you want to come back to this later, you can use these attributes to um, in your automate methods, so you can use this as a reference. When you're adding a new provider, as Dan showed earlier, there's the new uh, left side navigation, so you can move down to configuration and configuration management. And then on that page, you can hit the configuration dropdown and hit add a new provider. I think we need some more configuration words in there. Then uh, it'll bring up the new provider adding dialog. Um, you'll see what fields are required. This is pretty much the same as it was for Foreman, except we added a new type dropdown, and that allows you to select Ansible Tower or Foreman. And URL can be a URL or a host name. We figure out what's missing and save it as a URL so that it's more convenient for users. Once your provider is added and it does an initial refresh, you can see the left side. Um, it'll list all your Ansible Tower providers. And then under the provider, you'll see all your inventory groups. And then under the inventory groups, you'll see the configured systems. Also, you can see the, the inventory groups over here with a total of configured systems. The, in <clears throat> the inventory is a little bit limited right now, but we pulled back everything that we needed to support the current use cases. And we can definitely enhance that in the future. Um, but not everything applies that was part of Foreman. Not all of that applies to Ansible Tower. Um, so there's also a configured system to VM link. It's in the database already. We just have to add that to the UI so that you can see the relationship between a VMware VM and an Ansible Tower configured system. We have a configuration script summary. And here you'll see that any variables in the configuration script or job template were pulled in on the inventory refresh, as well as the survey data. And I'll hand it over to Drew for custom buttons. Thank you. So custom buttons. Um, once we get uh, a custom button implemented, you can actually uh, deploy or do whatever you want uh, via a job template by just you know, pushing the custom button. So I'll work through that, and then service dialogues, and then the demo. Um, on the menu, if you start over at um, automate, and then go to customization, you can select the uh, VM and instance unassigned buttons panel, and then um, once you select that, hit configuration, add a new button, and uh, then you'll see a fairly familiar add a new button dialog. Uh, the only real changes here are um, you have to make sure in object details that system process is request. Uh, you have to actually make sure that the request is an Ansible Tower job. And then over in the attribute value pairs area, at the very least, you have to actually have a key of the name, job template name, obviously followed by the job template you want to run. And then um, if you do have any params that you want to pass, you have to prefix that with dialog param. Um, and then obviously the name of the parameter. If you do pass a value in here, uh, it will override the default with that job template. Uh, you hit save to that, and then you're brought back to the button panel. Uh, if you select, in this case, VM and instance, uh, and then go up to configuration, drop down again, add a new button group, you'll give the button group a name, and then your button will start on assigned, and you'll move it over to selected, and then hit save. Uh, from that, you can go to the compute menu, uh, in our case, for VMs and templates, and you'll see your button over here. Moving right along to service dialogs, uh, in the configuration management menu, uh, if you work your way through those panels into the Ansible Tower job templates, find the template that you want to uh, create a service dialog out of, select it, and then again, from the configuration menu, you have a new option to create service dialog from this job template. Uh, once you do that, um, you'll give it a name, uh, you'll hit save, and then moving over to uh, services, catalog items, and then add a new catalog item, 
you actually can um, assign that as a new service catalog item. And again, here is our uh, catalog item um, form that we're used to seeing. Uh, the only real difference here is uh, after you select your catalog and then select your dialog, if you select an Ansible Tower provider, it will um, fill the following form with actually what job template you want to run. Uh, the revisioning entry point will default with the um, default state machine. Obviously, you can change that if you want to. When you actually create a brand new service dialog, um, obviously, you'll see that service isn't going to order it. But when you actually create it, uh, it will default by filling out all the survey data, all the variables, and we actually add another field for limit. Um, you can go in, edit that, and pull out or change whatever you want to. So uh, in the case of the demo here, we actually pulled out limit because we didn't need it for, the, for our demo. So now here's time for the demo. Uh, before we start, though, I, it's real important to note that this configuration uh, with Ansible Tower and Manage IQ allows us to deal with extremely sensitive and um, very scary business problems. So with that, we're going to show you how to deploy a Minecraft Pocket Edition server by simply pushing a button. Okay, we're running. There we go. So I just ordered my service. And uh, I think we're going to show here after I did a pause. There we go. So we'll give it a name. Uh, I'll, I'll read it since you probably can't. Microsoft Ansible Tower EC2 deployment. We'll hit submit. Oops, forgot to add the port number, so we'll get that added. I thought that was required. Uh, next, we'll see that the request is pending. Should move to accepted and approved. And now we move over to our uh, EC2 console and see I don't actually have any running instances. Now it's running and Tower is refreshing the inventory and now the playbook is running. Now we click on the new job and just started the deployment of the new EC2 instance, and there it is. And um, I click on here in the bottom just to kind of show so we can match IP addresses. You can see here on the uh, dashboard again for the job that we actually have the same IP address in the bottom left, and then it just output um, basically what the job template was going to output. We finish that, we'll click on My Services. Take a look actually at the service and down there at custom attributes. Um, I'll talk about that later, but I've actually parsed out uh, exactly what the job template sent back to us. Uh, now we're actually going to connect to the uh, server via SSH. First connection. And then uh, the process runs in screen, so we'll be uh, connecting to that via screen. And there it is running, and next, we're <laughs> demo my phone connecting to the service. Uh, and that shows up right there. Give it a name, call it EC2. Connect to the same IP address you see below. And wow, it sure seems like I type slow when I watch this. And it sees the server connected to it. Now we're generating the world for the first time. Building terrain. I've never seen this before. Only my kids play it. Yeah. Anyway, it looks like I ended up in the middle of the night on survival mode. So not so great. Uh, you can see there at the bottom, of course, it ran away from us, was that I entered the game and then left it. Uh, on the custom attributes, um, we currently aren't saving them. Uh, sorry, we are saving custom attributes. We're not saving the standard output uh, that the tower job ran, largely because it can vary so much. It uh, completely depends on the job. 
you can parse it um, with like a post provisioning automate method, which is what I did here. Um, but obviously, we're not saving that in the configuration scripts model. That concludes the demo. And let's see if we can get back. So for the future, uh, we'd like to add more venting, uh, help us pull the activity stream of tower so we can have more events to trigger refreshes, and uh, a few more use cases to drive inventory collection. Uh, before the Q&A um, part, <laughs> there is a talk topic on this um, that exists. So we got the link there. Uh, we also included the Sprint 39 demo, especially the part that talked about the tower features and the playbook used the demo. That's it.